Hello and welcome to Open. Our first guests are from the Bronx Community Health Network and they join us today to discuss their programs and their work in response to COVID-19. And we welcome Community Health Worker Supervisor Patricia Bernard and Community Health Programs Developer Renee Whiskey. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Guys, tell us about the 21 community and school-based health centers that you guys uh, sponsor. Sure. So good morning and thank you for having us. Uh, Bronx Community Health Network, uh, we're a federally funded organization uh, and a nonprofit organization. Um, and our mission is to connect people to uh, comprehensive community based um, health care. So that's access to community health centers, uh, which provide a wide range of services. And um, those health centers are actually both community and school based, uh, which allows people to get everything from primary care to seeing a social worker, a nutritionist, health educator, um, wow. both in the community and at our network schools. Um, Renee, yes. uh, how are you aiding the community during the COVID-19 pandemic? Sure. So we have a longstanding history of bridging the gap between clinical care and community-based services. So that's everything from helping community members to apply for health insurance, uh, benefits, legal services, um, just really connecting people to the resources that they need, as well as connecting them to primary care. Uh, what we know is that in our communities, these issues have persisted for many, many years, and they will continue to persist and be highlighted now because of COVID-19. Um, and so we are the bridge. We help um, connect people to health care and social services. And Patricia, how have things changed since the pandemic? Well, the way things have changed for us um, is specifically for people who are needing assistance in applying for services. Um, a lot of those services have now are now virtually available, right? So that's one big change. People used to be able to walk into their HRA office to apply for SNAP or uh, cash assistance programs. All those services are now um, available. The, all those, service, those services are still available, but the applications are now online. So that's for some of the community members that we serve, that's an additional barrier. No, not everyone has access to the internet. Those applications tend to be long, a little bit confusing. And so our staff is there to help guide people through the process. Gotcha. Um, another thing that has also changed is a lot of the people that used to provide some of the services, for example, food pantries uh, are now closed. And so we are, have to constantly reassess who are the, the community organizations that, who are the community, what, what I'm sorry, what community organizations are still available to provide those services and make sure that we're making the right connections for people. Did you have to add new programs? No, like Renee said, I think uh, we've always worked with community. That's what we do in the business of helping people. Uh, we work with underserved communities. We're always there to connect them to services. We haven't necessarily had to add any new services yet. There are some that we are considering, um, and those are things that we're exploring internally. Uh, we know that the biggest need now, one of the things that our staff is finding is that the biggest need now is food, and in particular, food delivery. So a lot of people are not able to leave their house to go get food, and so how do we get that food to them? And that's one of the things that we're exploring internally. Yeah. Are you working with any of the major hospitals or their agencies? Sure. Okay. We, um, I can answer that question. If, if, I, I, I don't know if you're done asking the question, but I can answer if. Yeah, either one of you guys can jump in anytime. Okay. okay. Yeah. So BCHN works in very close collaboration with the Montefiore uh, Health System in the Bronx. And so a lot of the people that we serve are uh, people that usually go get their care there. And because they're screened for social determinants of health, uh -huh. which are you know, food, food insecurity, housing, transportation, uh, we, we, connect and we connect those people uh, to the yeah. services. That we need. Um, tell us about some of the resources that are still available, like right now. What should people know? What do you want to tell them, the people that you serve? I think the most important thing for people to know is whether you had um, a need for food or housing assistance or legal services or any of those social service needs before, the services are still available. You just have to access them in a new yeah. way. And we know that that can be a challenge. And so 
part, like Patricia mentioned, part of our work is to really work with people to help them through that process. Now, there are a lot of community members who maybe didn't have a need before and now have a new need arising because maybe they lost their job because of the pandemic. Maybe, you know, right now it's very challenging. There are a lot of deaths and we know that in some cases the sole provider in the home is no longer with us. And that's challenging in and of itself. And so how do you now become the new caregiver for your home services? So, you know, unemployment, um, unemployment benefits are still available um, and there are new unemployment benefits available to those who have been affected by the pandemic um, and a plethora of other services. But mm -hmm. our outreach specialists are really, really versed in those services and really help make those connections for people. That's really, really great. Uh, and, and people, that's why we're here, BronxNet. We want to try to get the word out, let everybody know uh, that these services are still there. Yes. Because a lot of people are like, you know, they're home, but and there's a lot of things going on and things are moving really, really fast. And right. And we're in a, a, a critical area. We're in a, a COVID-19 pandemic that we were never into before. Right. And even though your local office may be closed, it doesn't mean that services aren't being provided. Yeah. So the best thing for people to do when they see the door closed is to you have a sign on the door saying where to call. Well, for, for us, you can always reach us at 929-220-8181. Wait, 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 what was that again? 929-220-8181. Those calls go straight to our outreach specialists. Um, and then we'll have someone, we'll connect you to the, the appropriate person to help you with your need. But also you can shoot us an email at info at bchnhealth.org. Uh -huh. um, and we also filter those emails and connect you with the most appropriate person to help. What do you think, Patricia? She got it. She said it right. Call us, email us. We've always been here to help. That's what we're in the business of doing, and we want to be there when people need us the most. And are you guys federally funded? How, how are you funded? Yes, that's correct. We are federally funded. Are you reaching out to funds from other people? Do you need extra funds or extra volunteers or help with uh, whatever you're doing? Absolutely. If you're interested in, in volunteering or providing uh, donations to BCHN, <laughs> absolutely shoot us an email at info at bchnhealth.org and someone will be in touch with you. And Patricia said, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's right. Any final words? You guys want to let anybody know anything special before we wrap? I think I think for me, in my part, I, what I want to say is I, I know that there's this is very difficult for everyone. I think specifically the the the, the Bronx is being hard, really it's being hit really, really, really hard, um, and it's exposing a lot of the disparities that already existed. But what we want to let the community know is we are here for you. If uh, if you need help, if you need help accessing services, if you need help for food, if um, Whatever it is that you need help with, just give us a call and we'll try to connect you to the right person. So we're here for people. We're here for you. Um, so, yeah. And stay how safe. We, how can we correct a lot of uh, the disparities that are out there? I mean, we have to get a COVID-19 pandemic to put a magnifying glass on the whole situation. How can we correct those things? So the next time something like this, we pray to God that it doesn't. But if something like this happens again, we won't be in this it seems like we're like unprepared position. Well, you know, I think uh, I think that there have been many institutions working collaboratively for a while trying to address these issues, both in healthcare and in the social service setting. Um, and I think that COVID-19, um, you know, one of the good things that came out of it is that it really highlighted that these there needs to be funds poured into these kinds of collaborations. There needs to be more collaboration at the local level and the um, federal level, the city, the state, um, to really, really work together in a very coordinated way to make sure that some of these inequities are are addressed and that we have an equitable society for people. Yeah. Well, we pray to God. We do. We continue to pray. Thank you guys so much. Is there a website that people can go to to find out more information about what you guys are doing? Absolutely. You can visit us at bchnhealth.org. 
uh, on that's our website and on all social media. Our handle is at BCHN Health. Right. Thank you guys so much. Community health worker, supervisor, Patricia Bernard and community health programs developer, Renee Whiskey. We thank you guys so much. God bless you. Stay safe and uh, stay in those homes. Thank you. Don't go out. That's right. Love you guys and hope to see you guys in our BronxNet studio soon. All right. We'll be happy to be there. You got it. Stay safe. All All right. We'll take a break. I've got more coming up next on Open.